Uh, uh, a visit to an ancient ruin this afternoon for those that are interested in attending. It's called Tuzigut, and it's going to be led by Gary David, our last speaker. So um, if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can meet there. If you need a map, Sandy has some, and that's at 2 o'clock. All right, so if uh, air traffic controllers uh, sort of look at everything from uh, angles and vectors and that point of view, I think that master woodworkers look at everything uh, more geometrically and through the use of compasses and, and basic proportions. So that's what we're going to get into here with Ed Nightingale. Um, you know, I really wish uh, you could, you could uh, see some of the emails that come through when we talk about these ideas. And what we're doing is really just trying to explore uh, what the ancients were up to. You know, what do these ancient sites mean? Are they energetic sites? Are they uh, signposts? Are they trying to uh, convey a library of higher knowledge? Uh, I'll be the first to admit we don't really know, but hopefully by looking at this problem from all these different angles, we'll get a better understanding. So please give a warm welcome to Ed Nightingale. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's have a little round of applause for Walter and his staff to put this thing together so we can all exchange these ideas and, and move this knowledge ahead. Thank you. So to get on with it here, in 1997, I was fortunate enough to travel to Egypt with John Anthony West. And it, it changed my life. It really did. Um, I went over there with, with the idea that, uh, that I had as a woodworker and a, a wood carver that this was an exercise in geometry. And I hypothesized that um, the Giza complex and its accompanying structures were, were designed as a whole complex, um, encoding different mathematical data and uh, geometry. So what I'm going to present here today is, is my work on a geometrical analysis that I've been working on since 1997. It's taken me this long to put all these things together. But um, what I'll be looking at here, uh, this ge geometrical analysis, I used a, a compass and a straight edge. And that was all I used to really do this uh, analysis. Um, what I was looking for was geometric relationships and proportion which I could then uh, turn into number from proportion. Then using math mathematics, um, I was hoping I would find in this hypothesis a system of measure. And it would be evident if one was in there and uh, that if it was used to design the, the complex as a, a, as a unified complex. So what I'm going to try to do here in a very short amount of time is give you a lot of information that I've found here. I can't. I don't have the time to spend to show you how all these clues fit together to allow me to come to these conclusions, but I'm going to show you some of the facets of this template. And it, it is a multifaceted thing here. Um, this is part of what I found at Giza. I'm sure there's other things, and I'm hoping by sharing this with you all that we'll be able to glean a lot from it and, and connect a lot more dots. So what I started with is uh, an unbiased plan view uh, without any surveyor's influence at all. I used a, uh, a satellite image here, um, as, and I used just a compass and a straight edge, and I was looking to do an as-built blueprint. In other words, just connect all the lines that these uh, designers were using to align these things and, and see if from a geometrical standpoint they all made some kind of sense. And uh, after a lot, of, uh, a lot of playing with the compass, many, many hours, I can't tell you how much time I have in this, but I finally landed on this point here 
which was actually a point I filmed in 1997, just from uh, uh, an interesting point of view, uh, which, which I felt balanced in the center of, of the plateau. But the center point is uh, located uh, at, at the causeway to Sphinx. But first, I'll go over the complex itself and what it includes. At Khufu, the Great Pyramid, its causeway, these three satellite pyramids are very important in indexing, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, the Pyramid of Khafra is the second in size. That's uh, also a very important part of this um, scaling of this whole plateau. Um, Mankara and its causeway. This causeway is also very important. We'll keep, I'll show you how that ties all in in a little bit. Um, also, the three satellite pyramids there are also another way to index, uh, and I'll get to that. The Sphinx and its causeway, obviously a very important part of the complex, and also the wall, the crow. It's, it's a, everyone has wondered why they built such a big wall. Well, it might be something other than a wall. We'll see here. So uh, the, we're looking here. Um, west is at the top. East is at the bottom. North to your right, south to the left is the orientation we're doing this. Um, so from this center point, which is right here, um, that was located at half the base length of this pyramid away from its eastern face. Um, and, it, and it goes from east to west right through the center. That was the, the point that uh, really I put the compass on where everything clicked. It also is the beginning of the Sphinx causeway here, too. So it's a very relevant point. So we take a, a circle and a square also centered on that very same point. And this is the base of this whole geometric exercise right here. It's a circle and a square, the circle having a, a diameter of nine units, the square having a side length of nine units. So here's some of the geometric proportions that are in there. Now, this is several layers of them. And uh, don't get too flustered by this. This is all very basic math and geometry, elementary level stuff. So don't get too glazed over. I try to make it nice and colorful for you and so your eyes don't glaze over too much. And, but uh, that's what's there. I promised I would stick to the truth and no cherry picking. So it's math and geometry. And, I just lost a few book sales, but uh, what are you going to do? Uh, so anyhow, um, we'll start with this. This is a lot of layers here, so don't get too flustered. But it starts out with a circle with its diameter by 9. And the important part here to scale everything is Kafra is located at that sixth position up from the bottom. Okay. Now, the other thing early on that clued me in was when I divided this initially, from that initial circle, I started using just basic proportions with my compass. And I found that by placing these proportions of half, one third, and a quarter in those particular places, it gave me nice alignments. If you can see up here, it worked with the, the, the satellite pyramids. Um, this obviously a third worked with Kafra, and this made a nice alignment with the uh, Sphinx Temple. So I also. Uh, found that uh, this specific placement of these circles allowed me to, to divide with my straight edge the circle circumference by nine, which uh, is a whole other aspect of this. And those of you who are, are familiar with Marco Roden's work, uh, this, this is a whole other level of this uh, mathematics involved here encoded. So I talked about indexing, uh, using the, the pyramids to index. Um, off of the satellite pyramids. This satellite pyramid indexed from the center of it to the center axis uh, divides the, the circle by eight. The next pyramid divides it by one ninth. This is the circumference of the circle now in pi wedges. Okay, and the third is, is by 11. And also a note here too, I, don't, I can't get into all the detail of how I made some of these. It might sound like a leap, but th there was very specific 
clues left after each stage of this uh, discovery that led me to the next step. Uh, one of these here, too, are the placement of Menkara. It falls into um, these uh, 9 and 11 uh, divisions, uh, but it's a little too much to go into right here, so we'll just move ahead. Now, another division of this circle and square, or the square, would be uh, di dividing it by the phi ratio. So this is a simple geometric exercise to show you how we divide this square into its phi ratio by swinging an arc from the bottom corner there and then swinging another arc from the top center and where the, the tangent, uh, going tangent to the other arc gives us this line right here. That is dividing the circle, at, or uh, the square, excuse me, into its phi ratio, which is this. This creates a golden rectangle um, and from this golden rectangle, we are able to create by, by a diagonal through here and through that part, create what's known as the Fibonacci uh, spiral. And as you can see, I mean, I hope you guys are excited about that as I am. That flipped me out when I found that, so um, thank you. So that locates the Sphinx and it, this is all uh, a very amazing plan. Uh, it just s s never ceases to amaze me what, what these builders did. So now from that same phi division, I simply drew a line where it connected to the circle. Now not all the way out to the square because we're showing now how the square relates to the circle. And by doing that, drawing an angled line to the top center, we just found, that's a template, a cross-section elevation view of the Pyramid of Khufu, right there. It's angle and it's base length, full portion, right there. And that, that short of time, we just determined that. And proportion, not scale, but proportion. Okay, okay also, uh, another clue that kind of led me to, to uh, the, this next step was, there was an equation used by the Egyptians that was a very simple way to approximate the area of a circle. Um, they, they didn't necessarily have to use pi. All they did was they took the diameter that was divided by nine. Now I'm gonna, I, I'll give you the equation here to show how we would do that with pi. Um, and this, this is a simple mathematical formula. It's, it's the radius of the circle times pi. Now the Egyptians used 22 over 7 as pi, that fraction. That, uh, its decimal equivalent is 3.142857. The, the, notice this number right here, 63.64. Th this is really important in, into all this. and I don't have the time to really get into depth with it, but just, just take note of some of these numbers. Also, we want to remember these numbers here too. It's really important for a whole thing. So now I want to show you, too, the confirmation of uh, the satellite pyramids being used as index uh, markers. Now look at that. If we create a, a square of 8, an 8 by 8 square within that 9 by 9, and located, shifted to the bottom, these, bless you, these three lines uh, go from the corner of that uh, square right through each of these three pyramids and point exactly to our very first uh, pyramid here that we, we have proportion to this whole circle. So here's this eight by eight square and of course um, eight square gives you an answer. Uh, the uh, solution is 64. So a real close approximation, 64 would be the area of the circle using this. So, so I was pretty certain that they were putting this square in there um, with, with the confirmation here of these lines. That was another exciting one. Also here to bring in this, this 